Dude, check this out, check this out. Come here. There we go. It's okay, buddy. I'll put you back in a second. These are so rare, this might very well be the first time they've ever been filmed. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. We're here in the tropical highlands of Togo, West Africa, on the hunt for a python that's actually closely related to boas and rumored to have two heads, the caliber python. It's a cool animal, let's go find it. So in this one little area, people have found slippery frogs, chameleons, gaboon vipers. There's even rumors that there are atheris or bush vipers here. Even though we're looking for a fossorial snake, I'm keeping my eyes peeled in every direction because there's a lot of cool stuff here in these woods. Dude, check this out, check this out. Come here. There we go. It's okay, buddy. We'll put you back in a second. This is an Acasis chameleon. Now, we did find this chameleon at night, but it's not nocturnal, it's diurnal. These are so rare, this might very well be the first time they've ever been filmed. Gracefuls and flapnecks, they can inhabit the savanna ranges. They don't need highland mountain to survive, but these guys only occur in the highland mountains just one mountain range that basically goes through Togo, a little bit into Benin, and a little bit into Ghana. That's why they're endangered, unlike their close relatives, which are doing fairly well in the wild still. So this chameleon was only first described in 2007, so it's a recent species. And soon after it was described, they realized it was also endangered. Because the forest here is getting cut down, and unfortunately, farming and other human encroachment is eating up that territory, fracturing populations and could lead to their demise if conservation actions aren't put in place. Which is a shame because it's, it's such a cool looking animal. You know, it's sad to think there's an animal that we're encountering today that was only recently discovered that might not be there for future generations. Hey buddy. Well, I could see he really wants to go home and I don't want to disturb him anymore. So I'm going to put him back and let him on his way. There you go. I feel fortunate for this experience. All right, little man. You're important to your kind. Good luck. Hey, dude, dude. Wow, luck snake. Oh, cool, yes, all right. Well, it's all right, calm down. Why are you, little guy? So this is an African file snake. No relation to the marine file snakes. This is an African file snake. Really, really cool snakes. I love these guys. You might be wondering why people call them file snakes, and that's actually really quite simple. The vertebral scales are actually fused to the vertebra itself, and that gives kind of a rough file feel all the way down their back. Some species are also thought to consume lizards and amphibians, but a lot of them eat snakes. Another thing you'll notice about file snakes is their scales don't overlap, meaning there's gaps of skin exposed. That means they're prone to dehydration, but they're also really prone to skin infections from too moist of substrate. They're really gentle, making them great education animals. I don't know anyone that's ever been bit by a file snake. <laughs> but I will warn you, they have a really, really pungent scent gland that takes days to wash off. I'm not even kidding. You get skunked by a file snake and everyone's gonna know about it for some time. If you notice, their heads resemble that of a dragon snake, but the relation is only superficial. But with the unusual scales and that cute seal-like head, they do look slightly similar. I actually work with these animals myself and I have found one really important aspect to keeping them is lots of leaf litter. You need thick leaves because they easily 
get stressed if they don't have enough places to hide and a simple shelter won't cut it. So having magnolia leaves or oak leaves and a really thick layer on top of your base bedding is a great way to do it. I love magnolia and oak leaves personally, but there's a lot of really good options. But if you do hope to breed them, which I would encourage because they're really cool snakes, just know that you can't keep them together because they have been known to be cannibalistic and they might eat each other. So cool, such a, such a treat to see. Vile snakes, fun, overlooked African culebrates. Give them a lot of leaves and I'm sure you'll enjoy them too. Gotta let them go. All right, awesome find. Let's go see what else is out tonight. There's so many little creeks and streams here, providing a whole different ecosystem than you find down below in the savannas. Whoa, oh, dude, check it out. <laughs> Come here, it's okay. This is a tailless whip scorpion. I'm not surprised to find it here. This is the perfect habitat for them. They love little cracks and crevices and rocks where there's a lot of moss and moisture. I mean, this is really where you see them. And this species is the one you see a lot in the pet hobby. If you remember last season, we found a small one in Java. These guys make really fun captives. Uh, there are people breeding them and you can set them up in a vertical tank and they need small prey. Because again, they look intimidating, but if you give them a large cricket, the cricket might actually eat them. But it's not the same species as this guy. This is the big one. These guys are incredible. They've got these big feelers, basically feeling their way around. Really imposing looking creature, but in actuality, they're fairly harmless. And by fairly, they can't do a thing to you. They don't have venom, they don't have stingers. Pretty much their best defense is hiding in cracks and looking creepy as all get out. The funny thing about tail is whip scorpions, it's not a scorpion and it's not a spider. It's its own special arachnid. Definitely reminds me of some sort of Tim Burton alien. They're awesome little critters, very delicate, and eat small little insects. If you want to keep them well, you need to make sure they have a good amount of humidity. There you go. Happy hunting, you little freak. The reason I'm looking at the soil so much is because caliber pythons are very soil specific. Meaning if it's too hard packed or rocky, they're not gonna like it there. They need kind of the looser soil underneath the leaf litter to burrow into, which is why they have the other common name, the burrowing python. Hey dude. All right. Come here. It's okay. So this is the caliber python. Now, the funny thing about caliber pythons is they aren't really pythons. Now, caliber pythons were originally thought to be sand bows in the family Eryx, which kind of makes sense. They're fossorial and they lack heat pits. They were later reclassified as a python, and then again in the early 90s they were reclassified to be related to rubber boas or rosy boas. And I can see that. There are a lot of similarities visually to a rubber boa and behaviorally. Then more recently, they did another study. They realized they're not related to rubber boas or rosy boas, and that's when they got their own family. But they do have the lack of heat pits like the sand boa, the tail like a rubber boa, and lastly, they ball up like a ball python if you disturb them enough. Really interesting snake. Definitely a chunky tail and a funny defense mechanism. They wiggle around going, hey, don't eat my head, eat this. And they'll often have a lot of scars on their tail. Now, the plus side of that defense mechanism is they pretty much don't bite, almost as a rule, because it's not a way to defend themselves. They always use this to protect themselves. Man, I could sit here and play with this guy all night. I mean, he's got such a beautiful home and such an awesome animal, you know, a really, really, really unique bowed snake. I've always loved these guys. To see one here, this makes my trip. All right. You gonna stay while we do the measurements? That's fine too. And you can, I don't care. Uh, a couple habitat 
observations is the soil is kind of loose here. It's very moist and it's very leafy and they need a really thick layer of bedding. It might be fun to mix a few different grades of bedding, meaning something that's really fine and something a little more coarse and make sure it's a really thick layer. You want at least four to six inches, if not more, for these guys to really feel secure in. The biggest trouble with keeping these in captivity is usually stress. People don't give them enough substrate and enough hides and then they're not inclined to eat. But if they feel safe and secure in their home with leaves and thick bedding, they'll do just fine. Well, for coolest python of the year that isn't a python, I think that award goes to the caliber python. Cool snakes. Look like poop.